Good morning. This is Doreen with ThoughtStorm Journal. I want to talk a little bit today about logic and critical thinking. These are two subjects that are questionable to me. I believe there are two things that are very, very rare to find. Until we all turn into Vulcans like Mr. Spock from Star Trek and can stoically and methodically analyze our own thoughts, we need to be very leery of referring to ourselves or anyone else as logicians or critical thinkers. According to Merriam-Webster, logic is a science that deals with the principles and criteria of validity of inference and demonstration, the science of the formal principles of reasoning. Now, I've always found this definition troublesome because it doesn't clarify where these formal principles of reasoning come from. It doesn't allow for the inevitable personal perceptions of the one who's attempting to be reasonable. Every single person you talk to believes they're being reasonable or logical, but it's based on their own perceptions of what reasonable and logical mean to them personally. And it's based on their personal perceptions of the subject they're attempting to be logical about. Now, according to the Foundation for Critical Thinking, critical thinking is, and I quote, the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. In its exemplary form, it is based on universal intellectual values that transcend subject matter divisions, clarity, accuracy, precision, consistency, relevance, sound evidence, good reasons, depth, breadth, and fairness. Now, this is a great and very thorough definition, and I was happy to see that it now acknowledges the flaw in it that I've been talking about for years, the flaw that comes from the humans themselves, and it acknowledges the discipline that's required in order to implement those thought processes. In a nutshell, in order to be a true logician or critical thinker, you must be able to eliminate any preconceived ideas you may have about the subject you're analyzing. You need to be able to clear your head of any perceptions you might have that would skew your ability to be logical about it. For example, if you have the preconceived idea that something or someone is stupid or evil, you are absolutely unable to think critically about them. Until you can erase those beliefs from your psyche and start with a clean slate with no judgments about the subject, you can't really say you have the ability to think critically or think logically about it. You would only be projecting your own perceptions onto it, which would do more harm than good. And this is arguably a big problem in society right now. No human no matter how much they claim to be logical or critical thinking, is devoid of human flaws. We all believe lies sometimes. We all are subject to irrational or uncontrolled thinking at times. We've all fallen victim to the deception of our personal perceptions more often than we think. Real critical thinking relies a great deal on our ability to understand and control our own thoughts, scrap all our preconceived notions about the subject, and recognize when our thinking is flawed. The problem is the majority of people are unable to do this. And the most dangerous thing about this is that all the while they're thinking they're doing it. This is why I'm a bit guarded when people claim to be critical thinkers. I've known very few. It's one thing to be able to think. It's quite another to be able to think about what you think, to pick it apart and analyze it and decide if every part of it is useful or not. And it's quite another thing entirely to be able to decide that maybe what you were thinking before was actually wrong or to decide that your preconceived ideas about the subject might be clouding your thinking about it. That's where the supposed logicians and critical thinkers often hit a snag. Even the most intelligent people get caught up in the idea of being right, like being right is the most important thing there is. 
and being wrong is the equivalent of the sky falling. And there's no one who can get caught in the trap of ego more than an educated person. Now, the work they did to acquire an education is commendable. But by virtue of their education and the work they did to attain it, they often believe they must be right, that they must know the answer because they're educated. But having an education, no matter how high a level that education might be, does not mean that person is capable of clear, unencumbered thought processes. And the basic insecurities of humanity cloud the discussion before it even starts. Egos get in the way. People often need to feel they're right and superior in their thinking. So in order to achieve this, someone, of course, has to be wrong. And this is where critical thinking falls apart. Not because of the critical thinking itself, but in the failure of the humans to understand the importance of getting it right and to implement it that way. If our personal perceptions get in the way of our analyzing a subject, then we're not being logical. We're not thinking critically. In order to be a real critical thinker, we have to recognize this problem and eliminate perception from our thought processes. We have to have the ability to clear our minds of any preconceived thoughts, beliefs, or ideas that will hinder the process of getting to the truth. This is what critical thinking really is. It's being able to think about and analyze our own thinking and correct it when necessary. But the hardest part is recognizing when we need to do this. It's not an easy task, and I've rarely seen anyone able to do it completely. We have to entertain the idea that we could be wrong, and that's not easy for many people. It takes a lifetime of self-reflection and self-analysis in order to even begin to really do this right. Being a logician or critical thinker takes a great deal of fortitude and much deeper thinking than many people can muster. And if you can manage to muster it yourself, it can mean the difference between being self-righteous and actually having the true capacity for sound reasoning.